Good morning, happy Monday. It's Jackie here from TVA Law, um, doing my Monday Facebook Live short information session. So I try and do this every Monday, uh, every Monday just on a short snippet of legal information that's hopefully helpful. Um, because I'm a wills and estate specialist, a lot of the previous videos have been on wills, estate planning and deceased estates as well as superannuation. So those are all then saved in the videos on this page. You can go back and have a look at those if you want to. Um, TBA Law though does a lot of property work as well. So I have done a short series on um, conveyancing and property transfers, buying and selling property. So you can go back and have a look at those too. If they're of interest to anyone else that you know, please tag their name in them as well. That would be great. Um, and at the moment I'm doing a short sequence, so four weeks all on um, neighbours and living in the community. So um, there are actually lots and lots of regulations about how we live in the community um, that makes things work fairly smoothly. So there's laws around um, drainage, rubbish collection, fences, um, noise, um, trees, overhang, overhanging things over fences, trespass, all these sorts of things. So I've done a couple of videos on those which you can go back and have a look at. Um, particularly the Neighbours and Trees one last week was, I think, of interest to a lot of people. This week I'm going to be talking about drainage. Um, so drainage um, between neighbouring properties. Um, so I suppose there's a lots of different scenarios, but I'll focus primarily on residential land first um, and I'll even use some examples of my own property um, to give you an idea. But basically, um, so firstly, you can drain water over someone else's property if you have their consent. It's best to have it as a written agreement and quite often then it's put in place as an easement. Um, a lot of water authorities have drainage easements over people's properties as well. Now, the drainage that I'm really talking about is flow over land, more particularly, that's gonna cause damage. So, reasonable flows from one property to another is not illegal. But when flow is unreasonable and it causes damage, the person who caused the flow um, can have to pay compensation to their neighbour. So, when is flow reasonable or not? There's a lot of factors to look at and it, um, a lot of policies around water management as well. Um, there's a lot of statistics around a one in 50 year flood, a one in 100 year flood or storm as to the rate of water flow and then how fast water is going to run over property. So, whether um, if for example, someone's in the middle of building a house on a new block and their neighbour has already finished their block. Um, the unfinished block, the flow of water um, has not yet been finished. So yes, it might unfortunately damage the neighbour's property. However, if the works were authorised and the people building the new house did everything that they could possibly do in terms of mitigating um, water flow, if it was an extreme event, there's nothing much else they could have done. However, if they didn't undertake the usual mitigating things to slow water flow down or to stop the run of sediment, then yes, they can be get, they can get in trouble for it. So um, it's either the water authority or the local council can take action on the water flow or the neighbour themselves can take their other neighbour to VCAT for damaged property. Um, a lot of other things affect whether water flow from one property to another is reasonable as well, such as the um, natural contours of the land. So if it's natural flow and someone builds downstream of natural flow, really that's their problem and they have to work out how to move the flow around what they've built. Um, the use of the land is also relevant. At the moment we're talking about residential blocks, but obviously there's a lots of different land use um, commercial land use, um, farming land use, um, other um, mixed uses and so on and so forth. 
It's also relevant as to where the water came from. So as I said, if it's a storm, that's one thing. However, if it's water that is stored on the property, so for example, a water tank that bursts, that can be an issue. Um, if it is water that is brought onto the property, so for some reason a tanker of water is brought onto the property and um, something causes that to be released in the wrong direction, that is also an issue that can cause damages. And also if the water is being pumped out of the ground like a bore and not being managed properly and it causes damage, then that's also an issue. So there's a lot of factors. Um, were the works authorised? What was the source of the water? Um, what mitigation, mitigating things occurred? What are the natural contours of the land? What's the use of the land? Um, and the other thing as well, not that a neighbour is going to worry so much, but a water authority or council certainly will worry about this, is if the flow of water from someone's property is gonna cause damage to waterways or wetlands. Um, so there's other penalties for that. But mainly we're talking about damage between properties um, and VCAT is the way to go. So I'll use out my own property as a bit of an example. We're, I live on quite a steep block um, and it hadn't all been landscaped when we bought the house. So the whole back of the block was pretty much its natural contour still. But what we ended up doing was cutting in a number of times to make three um, big pads, I suppose, behind our property. Now that obviously um, disrupted the natural contours. So when water then wasn't running down the slope in a natural way, we had to divert the water from around the back of our house and make sure it just didn't run into the neighboring properties. So we had to make sure there was significant drainage along the edge of the properties. So that's one example. Um, another example would be a more commercial sort of um, operation um, or construction. So while construction is going and trucks are coming in and out and roads aren't sealed property properly, there's a lot of um, extra sediment. Um, so there are regulations around what should be in stormwater. So if the stormwater is too full of sediment, um, there has to be certain things done to try and mitigate that. So where the water's really flowing fast, there also has to be like straw bales or something to slow down the flow of water. Um, and straw bales also catch sediment. So little things like that, they're all engineering things, but it just gives you a little bit of idea that water flow can be an issue between neighbouring properties. And yes, if water flow does cause damage from one property to another, then the person with damaged property can take their neighbour to VCAT to get compensation for the damage. So that's the main things that you need to know. Um, you can't just direct water as you choose. Um, there are regulations around that. So as I said, all these videos do get posted onto the page. So if they're relevant for you, they're all saved there and you can go back and have a look at them and tag people's names in it if you think that it's relevant for them to watch. Um, so at the moment, I'm doing this short four week series on neighbors and issues that could arise between neighbors. Next week is neighbors and fences, which is um, another highly regulated area because there are lots of issues often with neighbors and fences. Um, other videos I've done have been on my area of specialty, wills and estate planning, and I also did a series on property law, conveyancing, property transfers and buying and selling houses. So they're all saved on our page too. So I try and do this every Monday morning at 10, unless it's a public holiday or I'm away. Um, so I will catch you again next Monday with the next topic, neighbours and fences. Have a great week and see you next week.